Now, considering that a discrete random variable is quantitative, and we've learned that we can make a probability distribution into a table, it's not altogether surprising that we can find the mean of a discrete probability distribution, and I should say, and the standard deviation as well. We can find both. All right, now how? Well, there's a by hand formula. We will occasionally and mention and perhaps even use the by hand formula for the mean, but probably not the one for the standard deviation. We will use technology to do these, thank goodness. Um, but the by hand formula is not a bad idea to know how to use as well. You take each value, you multiply by its probability, and then you add them up. And that will get you the mean of the discrete probability distribution. The standard deviation is a little bit more complicated. Um, you take the values squared, multiply by the probabilities, add them up, and subtract the mean squared. But again, we will definitely use technology for the sigma, the standard deviation. Now you'll notice it uses mu and sigma, and that's not an accident. So we're using here the symbols mu and sigma. Those are population values. So that means that when we find the mean and the standard deviation, that means that we are working with a population. Now why is that the case? Well, that's because a probability distribution represents all of the future. Probability, there, I've got to spell it right. Distribution represents the entire future. Possible future outcomes. And so it becomes a population on, in and of itself. Sorry about my bad spelling there. All right, so a probability distribution represents all possible future outcomes. So therefore, it's a population. And so that means whenever we're working with a probability distribution, when we find the mean and the standard deviation, we will be using mu and sigma. Now the mu is very important in its own right. It's called the expected value. Now if you think about this, you'll realize that when we started the interpretation of the mean way back in chapter three, we would say things like, we expect the mean, we expect the average, we expect, right? That expectation is the mean. So that's a very important concept that we've actually been using all along. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but essentially it means that if you keep doing this experiment over and over and over, the mean of the results of those experiments gets closer to that expected value of the random variable. All right, now let's do this in practice. Let's look at our NBA finals data again, but let's look at it with these values for the probabilities that we found earlier. We want to compute the mean and the standard deviation. Now, if you want to find this by hand, you just multiply four times 0.123, five times 0.247, six times 0.37, and seven times 0.26 and add them up. Matter of fact, I could do that right now with a calculator. So I could take my calculator and take 4 times 0.123 plus 5 times 0.247. This is doing it by hand. 6 times 0.37 plus 7 times 0.26. And that finds the mean for us. So the mean would be 5.767. And again, if you want to write down the by hand, that's fine. It might come in handy every once in a while. So it's 5 times 0.123 or four times 0 0.123, five times 0 0.247, plus six times 0.37, plus seven times 0.26. It's not a particularly difficult calculation, and there we know what it is. X being the number of games, right? So this is X right here. Now, that said, when I said technology up here for using technology to find the mean and the standard deviation, I wasn't really intending us to use the calculator in that way. So there's another way we can use the calculator, and then we'll also use StatCrunch as well. So if I go to Stat Edit, and I have the columns of data right there, then I go to Stat and Calculate, one variable statistics, and I would tell it my data are in L1, so that's my list, my X list, and my frequency list is L2. Right, they just happen to be decimals. And I go to calculate and press enter. And you can see right at the top, 5.767. Now the calculator doesn't know it's a mu or x bar, so the calculator just says x bar. But you can see down below, sigma is 0 0.97196, 0 0.972, right? 
So this is the sigma, um, I just brought it right here, sigma for x, which is the sigma of the number of games. is 0 0.972 right there now if you like you can write down um, for the TI-84 make sure you use um, frequency list so use one variable stats L1 and L2 is your frequency list So make sure you make a note of that for your calculator if you're going to use the calculator. Now, if you're not going to use the calculator, if you're going to use StatCrunch, that's fine too. But we have to learn a different thing than we've used before in StatCrunch. Okay, so here in StatCrunch, I'm going to type in the number of games. Although I have capitalized that U in there. There, I fixed it. All right, so four, five, six, seven. And then over here, we're going to have our probabilities. So this will be 0 0.123, 0 0.247, 0 0.37, and 0.26. And that's actually a capital X. All right, because these are random variables. So now we go to stat. We go to calculators. So we're not going to do summary stat, which is what we did back in section 3.3. 3. We did summary stat and grouped bind. But now it's, grouped bind is not going to work. Grouped bind won't work because P of X are decimals. So in section 6.1, you're going to have to use the calculators and then custom down below. So you're going to use the custom calculator. So at the very, very bottom of the calculator menu is custom. So if you click on custom, it'll ask you where your values are. So your values are your number of games. Your weights are your probabilities, so your relative frequencies. And you click compute. And there you can see it tells you the mean right there. There's mu. And there's sigma. Same thing that the calculator gave us. And just ignore the rest of this. We don't care about the rest of it. <laughs> don't worry about it. But you just want the mean and the standard deviation out of there. So let's write that down. On stack crunch, you go to stat, calculators, and custom. So those are the two options that you're going to use, right? Of course, you have to have the table turned in, right? So it has to be that you've written the table either in one variable, or excuse me, in stat edit on the calculator or in the stat crunch spreadsheet. But one way or another, it has to be there. So this is the mean number of games, and this is the sigma for the number of games. As for interpreting the mean and the standard deviation, we have done this several times over. Um, we have seen this uh, first in section, uh, I think it's 3.2. So there's a script that we learned in 3.2. So you'd want to go find that. Which basically says, hey, if we were going to go pick a random NBA finals series, we expect, ah, see there's that word, we expect it to last 5.767 games, give or take 0.972 games. Okay, so let me write that up. If we select a random NBA Finals series, right, there's the context, right? So right here, I'm giving it context. Right, that's important because we have to talk about what we're talking about. In this case, it's the NBA Finals. We expect, and we wrote that in the script back in section 3.2, so it's still there. The series to last 5.767 games, give or take 0 0.972 games. Okay, so the expectation of this is the mean, right? That's the mu for the number of games. And then the give or take and the 0 0.972 is the sigma for the number of games. Right? So we give it context. The expectation is the mean. 
give or take the standard deviation. That's the script that we learned more or less in 3.2, and we're still holding true to it. And on a side note, if this is all looking very familiar, well, that makes sense. It should. This is kind of review. We've already learned all of this. We learned it, obviously, back in 3.1 and 3.2, and particularly 3.3, which was the other time that we used a frequency list to find a mean. Right, that was the weighted means back section, and this is the formula for weighted means that we learned back in that section. It's just that in that section we say divide by the sum of the frequencies, but in this case, the sum of the frequencies will always be one, so it's even easier than that. So this is very, very similar to stuff we've already learned, which makes this section kind of fun. <laughs>